Rates of chemical reactions. Rates looks at how fast a chemical reaction occurs. In order for a reaction to occur, contact between reactants needs to be made. By changing the temperature, the concentration, the surface area, or the addition of a catalyst can all change the rates of reaction. Today we're going to look at several labs that demonstrate some of these principles. In order for a chemical reaction inside the glow stick to work, the chemicals in the glow stick must actually make contact with each other. To do that, the glow stick has those chemicals in a separate container, and until you crack or break open them, they don't mix or come in contact with each other. So the first step is to break and to shake and to start getting that chemical reaction to occur having contact made between those chemicals. A glow stick contains hydrogen peroxide and an organic dye that decomposes when it comes in contact with the hydrogen peroxide, causing electrons to absorb energy, move up to an excited state, and then release that energy in the form of light when they return back to the ground state. We can actually control this chemical reaction using temperature. Placing the glow sticks in hot and cold water causes the molecules in the glow sticks to move faster or slower. In the hot water, the glow sticks uh, molecules will move faster. Kinetic molecular theory says the faster they move, the more they're going to collide with one another, and the faster or better ability for them to actually come in, come in contact and react. In the ice water, the molecules are moving slower and less contact is being made, so you can see a change between the hot and the cold. If we take the glow stick that's in the hot water and the glow stick that's in the ice water and replace them, we'll begin to see a change taking place as the molecules cool down, they'll slow down. That reaction will take less time to occur. In the hot water, the molecules are beginning to speed up. As they speed up, that collisions will take place more often, increasing or accelerating that rate of reaction. Magnesium, like the piece seen at the top of the screen here, is a soft silvery metal that conducts electricity. The chemical properties of magnesium is it can react with oxygen, but in order for it to react with oxygen to produce magnesium oxide, it needs enough activation energy to start the reaction. Once that reaction starts, however, caution, bright, bright light is produced during this reaction that exothermic reaction produces enough heat to continue that reaction going until all of the magnesium is used up. So this is a synthesis reaction that's exothermic. One of the popular places it's seen is with the use of fireworks. So to start this chemical reaction, we need enough extra energy to start it. But once it starts, It's going to continue to burn that bright white light that you see in a lot of popular fireworks. Magnesium metal. Iron and steel wool. Iron and oxygen will combine to make iron oxide. If we take a 9 volt battery and give it some electrical current, it will react with the iron to produce that iron oxide. However, when we talk about an iron cylinder, that when they go 
sometimes we might get a little bit of a spark, but not much of a change is occurring. With the iron, there is not much surface area when it's a cylinder for it to react with. However, if we take steel wool, we have the same iron, but now it's a large surface area. A lot of times used for like scraping pots and cleaning. We can actually take and spread that out in order for us to react with. Now that iron from the steel wool, if we spread that apart by touching a nine volt battery to the steel wool, a large amount of electrical current goes through a small amount of the iron, causing that iron to chemically react to produce that iron oxide. So I've taken a larger amount of that steel wool and spread it out from one of the pads. If we just take a nine volt battery and touch it to there, we can begin to see that chemical reaction occur. It is very exothermic, heat being produced to continue that reaction going forward. Once the iron has reacted, the leftover iron oxide will no longer react because it has formed a new substance. By increasing the surface area of the iron, allowed it to chemically react. If we try to see and touch again with the battery, we can see that no reaction occurs because the new material iron oxide is different than the original iron that we had. All right, greetings. We're going to look at the chemical demonstration called elephant toothpaste. For elephant toothpaste, what we're going to be looking at is using potassium iodide as a catalyst, and it's going to decompose hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. So to start that, we're going to look at 3% hydrogen peroxide and 30% hydrogen peroxide. For the 3%, I'm going to add some into the bottom of the flask. We are going to use some soap to catch the oxygen gas produced. And for some fun, we're just going to add some coloring to it. Now at the same time, we're going to set up the 30%, a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide Now the 30% is in kind of an accordion shaped bottle because over time it can break down into that oxygen gas and have that pressure build up a little bit more. And again we'll just add some soap so we can catch that oxygen gas produced and then some fun colors. to add also. We will now add our potassium iodide, our catalyst for the reaction. Not a lot going on. We can slowly start to see those bubbles start to occur as the hydrogen peroxide is breaking down, causing some small bubbles to occur. Now, if we do the same thing, but in the 30%, we can see a much quicker rate of reaction as those bubbles start to produce and more and more reaction occurs. Our potassium iodide was the catalyst that sped up this rate of reaction And we can see that 30% hydrogen peroxide, the higher the concentration, the greater the rate of reaction occurring, along with the catalyst speeding that reaction up. Safe travels to everyone. All right, Houston, we're preparing our rocket fuel. We've got our sodium bicarbonate, known as baking soda, 
and we filled our rocket with vinegar known as acetic acid. When we mix the two, hopefully we're going to produce some carbon dioxide, enough pressure to build up from that gas to uh, ignite and shoot the rocket. So we'll carefully insert and this will take anywhere they say between 10 and 30 seconds for it to launch we'll get ready to mix we have liftoff and landing <laughs> <laughs> For combustion to happen, you need three things. You need a fuel source, you need oxygen, and you need something in order to actually start that chemical reaction occurring. So, our first part, we need our starting fire. Now, what we're going to look at is, in order for three things to come in contact, the heat source, your fuel, and the oxygen, if you only have the surface area for oxygen to come in contact with, you can get fire to occur but very little fire is actually occurring because the only way that oxygen in the fuel source is catches on fire. If we are to take that fuel source and spread it out into finer particles, we can get a much larger, quicker flame to occur, increase that rate of reaction. So if we take, we can actually increase that surface area. We can get a much larger fire to occur. Now, one of the big problems with this is in grain bins, if that grain bin dust gets kicked around, we can actually get a large fire or grain bin explosion that'll occur from having that large surface area come in contact with each other. Safe travels, everyone.